Hi everyone, Simon Jacobson here, and we begin a new series. What the stars say about you. Aquarius is the first part of this uh, new Zodiac series. This program is dedicated by Alan Gordon in loving memory of his father, Baruch ben Chaim, and uncle Baruch Yehuda ben Shmuel. What the stars say about you. So let's begin with a, just a short introduction about the very nature of, uh, of the constellations of the zodiac, of the horoscope. It's critical to always emphasize, the way, at least the way I see it, not to get caught up in sensationalism and exotica. People often gravitate to that as a form of escape. I wouldn't call it necessarily an excuse, but so to speak, to blame the stars for our behavior or for our good luck or bad luck really absolves us of the most important dignity of all, and that's personal responsibility. And yet we do know in the Kabbalah, in mysticism, and other schools of thought, there is the concept of the signs. Each month has its sign, with all the details that come with that. So how do we look at it? Is it something that is nonsense? Is it something that has value? How much power does it have? Should I determine who, whom to date and what job to take based on different signs? So the way Jewish thought puts it is quite practical, while also very mystical and spiritual. And that is, end of the day, we are all born with all kinds of predispositions and tendencies and inclinations. But nothing controls you. There is no such thing as a predestined future. Your circumstances, whether you'll be born with brown eyes or blue eyes, or brown hair, or blonde, or red, this height, that height, even to what family you're born into, what country, what schools you'll go to, that's not up to you. But what is up to you is how you will navigate. Now, part of our makeup, our DNA, our genetic makeup, is also when we're born. And in that sense, yes, there are different times of the year that have their own, we'll call it predisposed, Set of, set of conditions, circumstances. But that doesn't control us. It's an inclination. It's like some people are born with a more aggressive nature, some are born with a more a milder nature. Some are more cerebral, some are more emotional. Some of it is genetic from, and hereditary, some is not. But the point is, just because we have a predisposition does not mean that defines who you are. And that's critical. How do the Kabbalists put it? that the divine power that created all of existence also created seasons. We know there's winter, there's uh, spring, summer, and autumn. How do you like that? I remember the seasons. <laughs> there are times of the year where the energy is a very high energy. There are times of joy, and there are times where it's a more subdued energy. But these are energies, these are vibes, these are states of being. The question is how you'll navigate it. Just like if you're out at sea and there's a storm and sometimes the water is calm. These are real circumstances. They're real factors that have an impact on us. But they don't control us. So in that context, there are times of the year, and here we're talking about the months. Each month has its so-called energy of the month. a predisposition, an inclination. So someone born in a certain time, yes, nothing wrong with saying just like we're born with certain personalities, that time of the year has a certain energy. So to give it too much power and saying that energy defines what I'm going to be or who I am, that's not correct. It defines your circumstances and it defines opportunities as well as challenges. But now you need to navigate so anyone that over-depends on it, that becomes something somewhat, as I said, absolving and losing the dignity of your choices. 
On the other hand, completely to ignore it, not necessarily. But everything with balance and moderation. With that said, so what do the stars tell tell about you? They'll tell a lot. They'll tell about those different so-called climates or archetypes, if you wish, or different personality types. Now we're in the month of Aquarius. In the Hebrew, it's called Deli, the month of Deli, which literally means bucket, the water bucket. Aquarius is water carrier. So what is the energy of this month? And what does it symbolize? And what does it tell us about someone who's born in this time? And for that matter, even those of us not born in this time of the year, it's still a time of the year that we have opportunities. What's the opportunity of this month? So what is water carrier? What is a water carrier? Sometimes people see that as almost a menial and dismissive type of position. Water carriers, wood choppers, are often at the bottom of the rung. Today we may not have those uh, vocations, if you wish, but in the times when it was, it was not necessarily the highest level of work. And yet, the water carrier plays a role that's a tremendously important role I mean, you think about it, it is part of our own soul's makeup that teaches us a very valuable lesson or lessons. So on a very basic level, someone that delivers water, water we know is the essence of life. Our sustenance is dependent on it. Our bodies are made up mostly of water, 75%, whatever the number is. The earth is covered by two-thirds of the earth is water. Without water, we couldn't exist. So it really is the nourishment and the nurturing of everything that grows, including life, ourselves. That's why when they look for water elsewhere in other planets, water is always the first indicator, because without water, there won't be life, at least as we know it. But what's a water carrier? Water carrier is someone that brings you water, that delivers it to you. So one of the ways to understand it is this. In life, you have two choices. You're either a giver or a taker. I mean, obviously, you can mix the two and be sometimes like this, sometimes like that, but it's two different approaches to life. When you're a bearer of light, an ambassador that serves by bringing your unique skills, your unique wisdom experience to others, you're giving. When you're feeding off someone else, you're taking. Moses, the great Moses, why was he called Moses or Moshe in the Bible? Interestingly, it's not the name his parents gave him. It's the name that Pharaoh's daughter gave him because she found him in a basket in the water in the river Nile and she drew him out of water. She called him in Minamai Mishisiu is the verse in the Bible somewhat of an ancient Egyptian, to draw out water from water. Why would you give him a name like that? And that become the name, that's the only name we know, even though we know the names his parents gave him. But that's the name that um, he's known as. Explain the Kabbalists a beautiful concept. Because Moses was a man of water. That there are two types of souls. There are water souls and land souls. Water souls come from a deeper, hidden place. Water is considered con- called the concealed worlds. We call it the superconscious. I like the word super, not unconscious or sub, which sounds like subterranean. The superconscious. Beyond conscious experience. Moses was a soul from that reality. There are souls that are land souls. They come from the revealed spiritual worlds. The difference would be the difference between thought and speech. When you speak, you're revealing your feelings, your ideas. When you think, only you know what they're like. Like water. Things that are submerged in water, concealed in the water. Moses came from that world of thought. But his mission was to be a carrier, an interface, a channel between the superconscious and the conscious. And that's why that was the name that she gave him, whether she knew it or not, consciously or not. But that was the name, because that was his role. 
That's why the Bible tells us that Moses was a man of no words. That's why when God said to him, you be my messenger, speak to Pharaoh, he says, I cannot speak. I'm a man of no words. He uses different expressions. I have, my lips are sealed or difficult for me to speak. And God says, who gives man a mouth to speak? It is I. I want you to say my words. I'm not looking for an orator, for someone that has a perfectly honed voice. Because I want you to express ideas that are beyond regular words. And here's the man of no words that left us words that are the best-selling book in all of history. His words have been repeated and continue to be repeated and studied and poured over and analyzed more than anyone else's words. Because they weren't just words. They were carrying the secrets of the hidden world of water. So he was a water carrier. And that's why you find expressions of water always identify with knowledge. In the book of Isaiah, a beautiful verse about messianic times, there will be no longer evil or destruction in this world. Why? Because the world will be filled with divine knowledge as the waters cover the sea. We're told that when the world was created, it was all covered in water. Even according to science, many theories believe that. And then land emerged. We, for nine months, were completely submerged in the embryonic fluids of, in our mother's womb. And that's why water is such a critical component in our lives. Not just drinking water to nourish us, but you know, we go into water, you feel nurtured, you feel surrounded, you feel submerged, like in a womb. It's calming. Beachfront property. Yes, it's beautiful sights, but there's something about water that draws us. Because we naturally come from a deeper world that we're not able to articulate. A man like Moses was that water carrier. So each of us has the Moses within us. We all have that ability and responsibility to be water carriers, especially those that are born in this period of time. What does that mean? It means to bring a message to others, a watery, a watery message. And water, as we know, is a cleanser. It's associated with things being submerged in water. It represents what in the Hasidic terminology and mystical terminology is called bitl. It's not, it's, not, it's fluid, not solid, but not quite invisible. It has that the solidity, solidness, and sol solid things concrete are inflexible. Water is continu continuously fluid, continuously mobile. Whatever you put in water is submerged within it. That's what true humility, modesty, suspending yourself in the face of something greater, that's what it means to enter into water. So we carrying message of truth, carrying marriage message of healthy knowledge, not information. We're talking about intimate knowledge, the knowledge of life, the secrets of life. That's what we have to be, water carriers. Aquarius. And that's the energy of this month. Every month has its own energy. That's the energy of this month. So think about it. Next time you meet someone, are you delivering to them a message from a deeper place? A message of inspiration, of warmth, of nurturing. A message that submerges them into something deeper, something greater. That when you're covered in the water, you feel that you're part of something beyond you. Exactly that sensation. So imagine if you saw your life as being a water carrier. Not that bad of a job. Today with technology, we can do it through social media, through messages, through email, other forms of communication. I'm right now trying to be somewhat of a water carrier. I hope I'm successful. And I hope you'll do the same in your own way through your own channels and your own sphere of influence and your own ways of reaching people. There's that parable, a famous parable about a water carrier. But someone had experienced real setbacks and difficulties in life. He didn't know really how to deal with it. So he was told this, uh, this anecdote, this parable. 
Every day the gardener would walk to water the garden. So he'd walk along a path. And he would go to the garden and water it. And that was what kept it blossoming, growing, beautiful, flourishing. But then something interesting happened. As he would walk down this path, people noticed that on the left side of the path, flowers began to grow. On the right side of the path, it was completely parched, nothing there. What was this fun, the reason for this phenomenon? Until someone pointed out that in his, in his uh, watering pot, in his dili, in his pail, there was a hole. And as he was walking along the path, the hole was on the left side. So water would leak out onto the ground and ultimately cause these flowers to start growing. The right side, was a, the pail was complete. Now you think a hole in the, pop, in the pail is a bad thing. But even here you see, no, that leak is what brought those flowers to grow. So in life... Sometimes watering something is not always what we do intentionally. Sometimes it's something we may not even be perfect in. But still, water is coming out of us. So remember, even things that sometimes seem imperfect, a crack, as Leonard Cohen says, forget your perfect offering. Life is filled with cracks. That's how the light gets in. Yes, and that's how the water gets out and makes things grow. So being water carrier doesn't mean you have to be a perfect person. It means that you have to always be in that mode of sharing, of bringing light, of bringing water, of bringing sustenance, energy, vitality, refreshing, revitalizing people. You see someone's a little down, saying a kind word. That's the message, my friends. And all of us are truly water carriers. Think about it. Put yourself in that mode. Try it out. Even once a day, especially during this month, you'll be surprised at the results. You will cause flowers to grow, often in places you wouldn't even have imagined. Because when we water things, that's how flowers grow. You can't pull a flower out of the ground. You have to water it. Same thing with souls. You nurture people. You validate them. Kind word. Something warm. Water them. And, you, and love blossoms. That's how we nurture and we nourish and we feed each other. So my dear fellow water carrier, do your job well and please share this with others. Imagine each of us in our own way doing this, what kind of world we would create, what kind of flowers we'd be growing. That's our commitment. Simon Jacobson here, Meaningful Life Center, MeaningfulLife.com. If you enjoyed this message, please share it with others. Love to hear your feedback, thoughts, comments. And with technology today, it's very easy to just pass this on to someone else. Just press a button. Be well, be blessed, and do your mission well. Serve well. Water everyone you come in contact with. Thank you.